Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're here with a design teacher brand. And today we're going to get into machine learning tips. We're going to discuss linear regression. So, linear regression is, you've probably heard of it, it is definitely the most simple type of model. I'd say everything in data science is built up around the concept of getting around the limitations of linear regression, all the way into deep learning. It's just uses linear regressions to actually connect uh, the neurons, connect the inside of the AI's brain. Uh, so linear regression is really, really important. It's too simple to really be super useful, but it's the starting point to really data science and, and kind of a good base to understand well, because we're going to throw a lot of math at this uh, linear regression to try and improve this. Okay. So just Getting through uh, examples, some, some of the things to be concerned about and some of the ways to use linear regression. Okay. So starting here, importing a couple libraries, uh, the standard data set, NumPy and Python, importing the tips data set. Then just taking a look, we have some floats, we have some objects, and we have some integers. To deal with the uh, integers, or sorry, the categorical columns, so no one hot code across the window, sex, smoker, date, and time. I'm going to also engineer. So the tips is, if you see it, it is a dollar number, but it probably is related to a percentage of the total bill. Okay. So I am going to predict the tip percentage, which is the actual dollar number of the tip. A little bit maybe harder, but I think a good number to know what percentage are they going to tip versus how much is the tip is going to be. Okay. So here I'm just building a list of features that I'm going to then extract from the data frame, make X, and then the tip percentage is going to be my targets. We use from sklearn.model selection the training test list so that we can evaluate the score on the, the, the test score. You're concerned about the training score, but we're more so concerned about the test score. We do test size of 1.2, and here we're importing the linear regression. So from sklearn dot model underscore, or sorry, dot linear underscore model, import linear regression. Here I'm using two arguments. I turn positive equals false. This is by default, but this is, you can play around with this. There is not many valuable arguments to use or hyperparameters to use within the regression. So just to kind of put out what there is, positive equals true will set all of the coefficients to be positive, which might not be natural for your data set and it usually hampers your model. Okay. So I say it's a false, uh, it is by default, but you can try to set to true and intercept equals true. It's true by default. I said it's true here as well. You can turn off so there's no intercept. That would be applicable if you made an intercept column of all ones. Your model would be able to build its own intercept using that column. If you don't want to do that, uh, you might have seen the add constant from stats model. Basically, it's built into SQL and you don't have to be creating another column to represent the, the intercept. It's done, we can just set intercept equals to true. And then just, I'm going to train it in the next model.fit, train x, train y, train. And you can see this is not super interesting uh, here, but a cool feature of Colab. Uh, I believe you have a notebook as well, as so you can actually look at the details of the hyperparameters of the model, but you can't really see it right now. That'd be good if you're doing a great search and add. Many and you're like curious which ones were the best ones. Okay. So here what we're gonna do is we're gonna predict predicting on the test set. So y is a y predictions test inputting from sklearn dot metrics mean squared area and r r2 square r squared score. Okay, I'm gonna get the mean squared area using the y test, so true value and the predictions, true value and the predictions, and the r squared. Okay, printing those out. Got a pretty score I would say and in considering most of our tips we've got like one two three getting an error of 20 is quite high and you can see our score is not very good this is pretty tricky um 
to do this, well, especially when you're doing the percentage. It's a little bit trickier to guess that. It might be easier to guess the dollar number of the, the tip, but uh, you can try to make it a little bit of a challenge. Okay. Common things that we want to do now that we have to know about this, kind of start to de-engineer it to understand why it's making the predictions. You can look at model.collect underscore model.intercept underscore so that it be intercepting the coefficients. Okay, but like that, it's not super helpful the way it is. So what I would normally want to do is put this into a data frame. So I'm just going to go to data frame and put this to a dictionary of model collapse. I'm going to say the index is equal to the list of features that I made up above. So it'll be in the same order. Okay. And then coefficients, I'm going to sort this. Ascending equals false, so the highest one will be at the top, and then the descending one will be the lowest. Coefficients. So you can see here that Sunday added a dollar thirty, or would be expected to add a dollar thirty roughly to the uh, market range. Okay. So this is saying Sundays people are good tippers on Sundays, people are bad tippers on Saturdays. Interesting. Okay. The size uh, the, of the party would mean a bigger tip. Smoker equals yes would mean a bigger tip as well. And you can kind of see down there, you can see on Thursdays, bad tippers, smoker equals no, also a bad tipper. Interesting. I feel like I'm a good tipper, though. Um, okay. So really kind of one of the benefits of the machine learning model is, yeah, you get to make better decisions, but you also get to de-engineer that model and really understand how to make good decisions yourself. Okay. Uh, and this is just at a very simple level, but we still get a lot of value. Uh, although it's not a great model, it's still interesting that we're able to extract these insights from this and we could explore really do people tip better on Sunday? Like, if I was this person working in this restaurant, I'd say I'd, I'd want to work on Sunday. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you for the next video.